It's extremely grueling. We always say that we're, we stretch you to the point where we can see all your, your holes. The Joint Readiness Training Center rotation is like a cricket uh, bat in the face over and over again. What's up, right? I'm Sean Grescheck, and I'm joining the Welsh Cavalry as they spend 12 days in what's known as the Box a feared training area that's been used to test troops to their limits for decades. Each day, a moment to reflect. At Fort Polk, the home of the US Army's training center in Louisiana. Millions of soldiers across the decades have been sent here to be tested and prepared for combat. They call it forging the warrior spirit. Every single day, uh, you're, you're pressing against uh, an enemy that's thinking, that's incredibly capable, um, and, and wily, uh, neighbor here for us, uh, and against a really challenging terrain, and against the scenario uh, that uh, tests every unit uh, to the breaking point, and that's by design. Um, and so there's, there's not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of moments where you're feeling really good about yourself, uh, but there's a, a, you know, every single moment you're learning something that's gonna make your soldiers and your unit better uh, to be successful in combat. Deep in the heart of a state that is home to swamps, tough terrain, all weathers and alligators, there is a huge operation here at Fort Polk as each rotation of soldiers passes through. Such as the scale and complexity of what happens here, it takes 300 days to plan each exercise. The training area is vast and spans 90,000 acres. So we're just about to go and see the uh, deputy commander of the operations group here at Fort Polk. He knows everything there is to know about exercise rattlesnake. He's going to give me a history lesson and explain how and why Louisiana has such important roots for the training of US soldiers. Hey, Sean, how are you? JRT specifically uh, has its roots all the way back to the interwar period between World War I and World War II. We're moving from horseback to static warfare with the advent of the machine gun in World War I and then moving uh, in the interwar period back to maneuver warfare, only now not on horses, but on these big steel beasts. Tom Spoke and youngsters get acquainted with the men who will be a permanent fixture of their newly created form. As the United States began to gear up for World War II to enter World War II, um, General Marshall realized, hey, the last thing that we want to do is, is learn these, learn the lessons that are gonna be associated with this in combat with a very capable German force. Uh, so not, not something we want to do literally under the gun. So uh, he devised what became known as the Louisiana Maneuvers. Louisiana seems to like the Army. Its people can remember the days when 750,000 soldiers, including Lieutenant Colonel Dwight D. Eisenhower, trained here for future battles against Germany and Japan. And literally uh, brought full Army groups down here uh, and, and ran them um, through the area that we, we are, we're currently in and where Fort Polk is, is currently uh, centered, then it was Camp Polk. An incidental feature of the exercise is the elevation of Camp Polk to full-fledged status as a permanent fort. The aggressor's success becomes clear as the rear guard of U.S. troops break off the engagement and flee north toward the Red River. Fast forward to 2021, and the latest battle group of soldiers are being put through their paces and working with their US counterparts are the Welsh Cavalry. There is a special relationship obviously between us, us and the US and especially as NATO, the cornerstone of uh, our defence uh, in Europe. Um, it's absolutely vital we learn these lessons. A, it's really fun uh, working with these guys and they have a lot of assets they can throw at things, a really well resourced exercise. Uh, and B, just those small little lessons of interoperability will allow us, if we do, if the balloon does go up, we'll be able to win that first fight because we're already integrated them. 
uh, through exercises like this. The exercise is now at its height and has attracted a very high profile visitor, the head of United States Army Forces Command, Four Star General Garrett arrives to take a look for himself, and we are granted a rare chance to interview him. You know, we are never, ever, ever going to fight alone. I mean, we're not. We're going to fight with our partners. Uh, and the only way you are able to fight with your partners is to build relationships. And so, you know, what you have here are, you know, you have relationship building 101. Right, so you have young soldiers from uh, you know the UK. You have young American soldiers, and what they get to do is they get to to meet one another. Uh, they get to look at each other's kit. Uh, they get to talk to each other about you know at the level we're talking here. In some cases, these are very, very new soldiers, right? Uh, but but it's it, it is a uh, it's an impression, and it's a lasting impression. What will this be teaching the Welsh cavalry? Uh, I think it'll teach them, uh, one, it'll confirm whatever they thought about, you know, American forces. Uh, so they'll leave here, because they all came here, if they've never worked with us before, they all came here uh, with an impression in their mind based on what they've seen on TV, based on what they've read. So this is going to allow them to confirm or deny, you know, uh, their thinking about, uh, you know, the United States Army. And it's the same thing with ours. Uh, this is going to allow us to, uh, you know, spend time with and to get to know uh, our Welch Calvary here. Uh, on a more personal level. So I think it's really about, you know, both of our uh, units and, and our soldiers just getting to know each other so that, uh, and establishing relationships so that when we do have to fight uh, a real enemy, you know, uh, we'll know each other and we'll be able to, uh, to be more successful. In terms of, you know, the future threats faced and, and the sort of training done here, what do you think it is going to look like, you know, future conflicts where, you know, you're, you are working together? Things are changing, aren't they? They are. I mean, we, you know, we, we talk about near-peer adversaries. You talk about, um, you know, the, uh, the technology that is available out there. I mean, just look at what's going on in Yemen and Saudi Arabia, for instance. You know, the Houthis, uh, you know, who are, I mean, if you think about it, it's one of the poorest countries in the world, and you would think a fairly unsophisticated enemy, but they are... Uh, you know, they're doing some pretty interesting things, you know, with the available technology. Uh, and the proliferation of technology has made, uh, you know, I think all of our fights a little bit more difficult. Um, you know, we're, we are in the United States, and I think globally, um, we're spending more time talking about multi-domain operations. And, and in our army, uh, in our military, you know, it is a concept that we are refining. Uh, and you know, and the you know the domains are everything from space to subsurface, right, um, or beneath the sea. Uh, and um, you know, we're going to be contested in each of those environments. We got to be able to fight in each of those environments. We need to be able to understand uh, what each other's capabilities are uh, in those environments. Um, you know, the British have uh, capabilities and rules that allow them to do things that are easier than we can do, right? I mean, the British have uh, unique capabilities uh, in some cases that uh, exceed our own. Uh, when I think about partners, when I think about, you know, um, uh, units that we've worked with, you know, the first unit that always comes to mind are our British, our UK, our UK partners. And our, our relationship and our history goes way beyond, you know, uh, the time that I have it, I've had in the Army. Well, thanks. Lovely to meet you. Thank yes, you. Good to meet you. Next time, we have exclusive behind the scenes access with the Welsh Cavalry and meet their first female trooper. Sean Grezczek, Forces News, Fort Polk, Louisiana. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.